Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back students. This is Dr. D for Science Beetle and uh, Math 101. Today we're gonna be looking at rounding and estimating. When we talk about rounding and estimating, essentially what we're talking about is we're gonna take one number that's usually in some kind of, uh, it's usually a decimal like 28.1, and we're gonna substitute this number for another number that's gonna be easier for us to either subtract or add or divide or multiply. So it just makes it easier on us as the, uh, the user. So essentially one way that we could do this is take this number and we'll write it more like a 28 because we're rounding uh, to the nearest whole number. So remember from a previous lesson that we, when we were talking about the number place values, we talked about the place value uh, kind of being guided by the decimal point. And so in this particular case here, the decimal point, numbers to the left over here are gonna be whole numbers and numbers to the right of the decimal point are gonna be fractions. And so what we're really trying to do is eliminate the fraction part of the number and give it, round it up to the nearest whole number. And so there's a general, very easy rule to do this, and let me show you what that is. So it's kind of, kind of like this. So it's kind of like a hill, and the thresh point of this hill is going to be five. And so if we were to write little numbers here, four, three, two, one, and over here, zero. And the same thing over here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so forth, right? But essentially, the, the, the tipping point is right here. So essentially, any number that is greater than five, so if it's on this side of the, of the equation or of this little graph, then anything over here, then you're going to increase to the nearest uh, whole number, okay? And anything less than five, you're going to reduce to zero, okay? So let's go, let's go ahead and do this little example here, and I'll, let me get a number, and, and then we can try to estimate it. So recall from the previous uh, lesson, or we had a number that we had was uh, 2831.123. And so whenever you're estimating, the number that you're really looking at is going to be the number immediately to the right of the uh, decimal. So the number that we're looking at is going to be the number 1. So if we were to take this number here, where does it really fall in this line? Well, actually, it falls over here. So it's less than the 5. So essentially, I have to reduce this to 0. So essentially, this number then becomes a 0. And everything to the right of this number also becomes a 0. And so the number that I would be resulting from this estimation is going to be 2831. Now, typically, we don't write the last three zeros here at the very end. All we really write is 28. Three, one. Okay? And so let's go ahead and do another example. Go ahead and uh, round this particular number here. If I give you a number, let's say 32.7. Well, again, we take the number immediately to the, and we're going to round to the nearest what, ones place. And so essentially, we want to round it to the nearest one. So this is the ones position. And so the number that we're going to be looking at is going to be the number to the right of the decimal which is going to be the 7. And so we look at the 7, and then we ask ourselves the question, is 7, where does 7 fall on this line? And essentially, is it greater or less than 5? Well, we know that 7 lies over here. And since it lies over here, it's already made it to the other side, so we're going to increase the 7 to the nearest 1s. And so by doing that, that means that this 7 then will increase the number to the left by a factor of 1, and that number then becomes a 33. But what if I have a number like 891, and I ask you to estimate or round it to the nearest uh, tenths, uh, tenths place? So essentially, I'm asking you to round it to the nearest tenth uh, place here. And so it's going to be the second digit, the 9. And so in order for me to look at this rounding, I need to look at to the number two immediately to the right, which is in this case the one. And I ask the same question, where does one fall on the scale? Is it greater, less than, or equal to five? Well, if I look at it, the one is gonna fall right here. 
since it falls on the left hand side I need to turn this to zero and I, so I reduce and rewrite this number becomes 890 and the one turns to a zero and so essentially because it does not meet the threshold of being greater or equal to five the last digit in the ones place gets reduced to a zero and then the number goes to 890. Now you're probably wondering why do we go through this whole process? Well the reason we do this is because we want to be able to get into an easy method of estimating numbers so that we can quickly add them and subtract them. So let, let me show you what that looks like. In fact l let me challenge you at this point. I'm going to put up a list of numbers and I'm going to challenge you to see if you can estimate them or round them, estimate them and try to come up with an estimated answer. Okay, so let me get, go ahead and write these numbers down for you. So let's pretend that we've got these four large numbers here, and I'm asking you to round to the nearest hundreds place. Okay, so before you start, let's just set the rules, or you want to make sure that you add them. If you're going to compete against me, go ahead and add them individually all the way down, and then give us the answer at the bottom, down here. Okay, and we're rounding to this particular spot, the hundreds place. And I'm going to go ahead and do my work here. So if you want to go ahead and... and practice this, go ahead and write the, pause it now, write the numbers down on your own separate sheet of paper, and then we'll begin in about three seconds, okay? So go ahead and pause, and um, we'll see you in three seconds. And then when you're ready, press play. So one, two, three. Okay, go. So I came up with approximately 1,600 for the answer here. Now, you may still be working on it yourself, but if you notice the difference here, because I was able to round and estimate, I was able to come up with the answer fairly quickly compared to the long way of dividing, or excuse me, the long way of adding all these numbers. So if I were to add all these numbers, let me just show you how long that would take me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go. So I would say 2 plus 3, 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, right? Or six, and then I would have to do eight plus two is ten, plus seven plus eight would be eighteen. Carry the one, so four and th uh, six is ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And so there's the answer there. So if you notice it was slightly longer than the other one, and the answer that I have here is fairly close to the answer that I had gotten while estimating. So now you see why estimating is very important. Now keep in mind that these numbers here are whole numbers. Can you imagine if I would have put some uh, decimals in here? So let's go ahead and do one of those problems here just to show you the difference here before we move on to the next lesson. Okay, so I've got these four numbers here. So what I want you to do is go ahead and add these up, but don't, don't start yet. Add them up, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same process, but I'm going to go ahead and round these numbers to the nearest ones place. So that would be the, the first digit to the left of the decimal. So go ahead and do that, and while you do yours the long way, I'll do mine the short way, and we'll see who comes up fast, or first, rather. I'm predicting that my method's going to be a little bit faster than yours, and it's going to save some time, but let's see how we actually do. Okay, so on the count of three, if you want to go ahead and write the numbers down first, press pause, and write the numbers down, and when you're ready, we'll go ahead and begin. So I'm going to give you a three-second delay, and then I'll say go. So one, two, three, go. Okay, so this is a... Five, six, eight, five, four, eight, one, eighteen, eighty-five, nine, nine, eighty-one, zero, five, zero, here, ten, eighteen, one, five, one. So five, one, eighty is what I got. So we'll see if that's what you've got. And doing it the long way, what you'll what you'll notice is then we can compare. So let me go ahead and do that process now. Now, one of the complexities, uh, well, actually, let me go ahead and write the number that we that I got up here first, 5180, and I'll put this over here in green, and let me erase the rest, But because you're going to see one of the major hurdles with not rounding uh, when I add up the long way. Okay, so adding up the long way, what, one of the first things you have to do is you have to add up and line up all your decimals. So here we've got a decimal here, 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 but we've got one way over here, so I have to rewrite this first off to make sure I'm not... Uh, missing any numbers. So if I do that, essentially I'm going to have to rewrite this last number, 5081, I'm going to have to rewrite it. So 1805 and put a decimal there and add it. 
And so once I do that, then the other thing that I got to look at is like, I have all these numbers here and the third number, so I got to put in these blank zeros all the way across so I notice, or so just so I can keep the places and uh, the value places intact. Now when I do that, I notice that all my numbers line up, so this would be a 5, this would be a 4, this would be a 1, this would be a 9, this would be a 2, and then I would add these three numbers here. 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 1 is 12. Put the decimal one and carry the 1 up top. So it would be 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 7 is 19, 19 plus 1 is 20, so 0, carry the 2. So 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 2 would be 18, carry the 1, that would be 1, 5. So if you look at the, how long it took us, it took us a little bit longer to do. The answer that I got was a little bit more precise. It was 5,180.229145, but when you compare it to my method of 5180, it's actually very, very close, and it took me a lot less time for me to calculate mine than it did probably doing it the long way. So doing it this way, you now see that estimating a number or rounding a number uh, essentially will then allow you to estimate an answer a lot quicker than it would if you would have used the long method of adding every single value in each of its place uh, the longhand away. And so hopefully you can see the, the beauty of this and it, it allows us then to estimate all kinds of stuff as we move through. Let's go ahead and do another one, but this time what we're going to do is um, we're going to do one more, but we're going to just show you, just so I can show you the, how you would multiply using the uh, rounding process with numbers. Okay, so here we have this example. We have a number of 32.291 and we want to multiply that times 3. And I want to make sure that I can do this as quickly as possible. And so I'm going to do it two ways. One, I'm going to do the short way and then I'm also going to do the long way. But in order for you to see the big huge difference, let's go ahead and do the long way first. And then we'll do the short way here on the other side. Okay, so the long way would be if to multiply this, you would have to multiply the 3 all the way across, first moving to the 1, so it would be 3. 3 times 9 would be 27, so it would be 7, carry the 2. And then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And then 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. Now the other thing that you got to keep in mind is going to be the decimal place, because there are three spaces, or there are numbers because there are three digits occupying spaces to the right of the decimal point, then we need to make sure that our answer then has the same number of spaces. So since we came over three spaces from the right, we have to go in three spaces on our answer. So one, two, three, and so the answer would be right there. So our answer here would be 96.873. Okay, so you can see how, that, how fast that was. Now let me go ahead and rewrite this, this problem here and estimate it. And you go ahead and notice the difference here. So 32.291 times 3. Okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and estimate this right away, beginning now. So this is 33, so 99. So did I come up with approximately is 99. Okay, so let me redo that. So if I got 32.291 and I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by 3, but I'm going to go ahead and round the top number. And I'm going to go ahead and do that beginning now. Okay, so that number then would become 32. Why? Because the number to the right is 2. It's not greater than 5, so 32 times 3. First I take the 3 times 2, 6, 9. So the answer is 96. Notice the difference between these two numbers. They are extremely close, and the difference between them is only point 0.2 difference between the two. So you can see that the rounding, even in multiplication problems involving decimals, is still going to be a lot faster if you were to do it the longhand, multiplying every single number on their own. The same thing is true with the dividing numbers. You want to go ahead and do the rounding first and then divide, and then it'll come out just about the same. Now, if it's very crucial that you have all these digits and, and you're expected to be very precise with your answers, probably the estimating is not going to be the best way for you to go, in which case you want to use a long method. But that'll keep you going here for now. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Subscribe us, and see you. Uh, we'll go ahead and see you next time.